How do you know that your conversion tracking is even working? Uh, we harp so much so often on setting up your conversion tracking and once it's set up, uh, the worst thing you could do is not test it. So right now I'm going to teach you how to test your conversion tracking using Google Tag Manager. Um, honestly, if you're not using Google Tag Manager, you should be because it's the gold standard and it makes things easier and um, you know just kind of protects you from yourself a little bit. It also helps keep you organized. So use Google Tag Manager. When you're inside of Google Tag Manager, I already have videos on how to set up conversion tracking. So I'll include one of those videos here. Uh, in the description in those videos I actually talk about testing but I've had this question often enough to where I want a unified video where I can just go go here um, so I'll make sure to, to include the how to test or how to build conversion tracking video in the description of this video um, but to test it when you have everything all set up there's this little preview mode over here and if you click on preview it brings me to start tag assistant now you'll notice that this is different so if you've used GTM in the past and you try to test in GTM this is a brand new thing uh, widget who what much to call it and Google it explains to you why they made the change and it has to do with the death of cookies so Google's basically saying hey the way that we were tracking things previously is going to go away almost entirely and we need a new tool plus you get a bunch of other features and stuff that they provide so just FYI um, this new update is uh, it's aligned with all of the other changes that we're seeing made so what we want to do is enter the website that we plan on uh, testing here um, in order to preview it and when I click on start it opens this new page and it opens the website that I'm going to test. Um, and you'll notice, let me move my face. You'll notice over here in the bottom right hand corner, um, can I draw? I can't. Oh, that's so cool. I just discovered this now, y'all. Over here is our debugger. And the debugger lets me know, um, you know when things are connected and what's going on. And um, it, it makes sure that that's firing. Otherwise, you might not necessarily be in debug mode. So. Um, now I'm going to test conversion tracking. We're going to go to the contact us page. We're going to fill out the contact us form. And uh, I'm on the contact us page. And when I and let me just actually go back, take you back to the debugger. One of the things that you'll notice is it's following my session in, in uh, chronological order. So uh, this container loaded, um, this container loaded. Uh, and so on and so forth and I'm on uh, this page and then when I moved over to this page you'll notice that I've got kind of this hierarchical structure and so you can see this is me on the home page this is me on the contact page if I go to let's say I go to personal taxes then a new container loaded a new uh, page is being shown inside of tag manager so uh, it's following along so you can see like gosh all the stuff that I'm doing is you know currently relevant and if it's not then you know that hey whatever it was that I coded to fire isn't firing so go to the contact page um, let me do that again sorry I just wanted to that brief aside so that you knew that that was happening uh, and then I'm on the contact us page and now I'm gonna go to the thank you page someday bam uh, thank you contact which is how I'm tracking these conversions and you'll notice here at the very end we can see tags fired contact form submitted where tags fired prior to that was just my remarketing tag so up until this point you'll, notice, you'll see tags not fired contact form submitted but as soon as I get to this thank you page it says tags fired contact form submitted which means my conversion tracking is working which is awesome so now I know that I can go conquer the world with Google and this will you know be intact um, the thing that you want to do is leave debugging mode because if you don't, every single time you go back, that little floater is there. And it, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's not that big a deal, but it annoys me. So um, we'll stop debugging, um, and you know, it'll also stop passing information back and forth. And, and that's the way to do that. The other thing that you should be cognizant of is you want to test regularly. Like you know, WordPress makes an update. Some somebody changes their URL structure. We had a client who, I think I don't remember the exact circumstances, but I think all they did was add a blog. But for whatever weird reason because of the CMS they were on, their URL structure ended up having um, they ended up having an additional directory. So it was like their website.com forward slash, you know, LP forward slash all their pages, which killed all of their conversion tracking, um, which is a problem. But we check, we check, we test. So make sure you're testing your conversion tracking regularly. I hope this video helps you. Um, this is the number one mistake that people make, by the way. Anytime I audit or evaluate a campaign, the first thing I look at is, is conversion tracking enabled and is it enabled properly and 50% of people don't have conversion tracking at all 
I bet you that data point is real. I'm kind of making that up because I'm being petulant, but I bet you there's so many people out there that are just running ads. They're just running traffic like it's you know radio advertising. And then of the people that do have conversion tracking set up, more than half of them aren't set up properly or they're not tracking conversions properly. And this, by the way, I, you know, I just tested the contact form. You want to track every single conversion opportunity on your site because if somebody does something, even if it's not the thing that you ultimately want them to do, that's a predictive indicator. That's, that's you know, because here's what's going to happen is, uh, you know, industry standard conversion ratio, I think is 2% or whatever. Let's say it's 5% or 10%, whatever it is. If a thousand people come to your website, that means adjusted for margin and error, all of them are not converting, right? Right? So, it, you know, it, what you want to do is you want to be able to say like, okay, you're not going to give me your money, but here's a lead magnet or an offer or an opt-in or a schedule or a download or whatever. And of the thousand people that didn't buy, a larger percentage of them than zero will take you up on those offers. And that algorithmically begins to equip the machine to know like, okay, these are my converters, um, which I have no way of proving, by the way. Google hasn't come out and explicitly stated that transitional CTAs help with conversion events, but I can tell you from my experience, having done this as long as I have, that uh, I have seen it and it, it works. So take that for what it's worth. It could be the ravings of a madman who just spends way too much time staring at some of this stuff. Um, Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you, truly. Especially our subscribers. We're getting like amazing responses now. Comments are blowing up. They're getting a little hard to manage. So if I if I don't respond right away, forgive me, but I'm still trying to keep up with everything. And that's it. Like, comment, subscribe. We shoot a video every day. I hope I get to see you tomorrow.